we're doing it again. We're gonna see a Matt Walsh video. Yay! Homicide rates in U.S. cities all blew up somewhere around the mid 20th century. Baltimore's homicides were mid 20th century, so 1950 homicide rate. So mid 20th century, so homicide rates in the 1950s. All right, so this has a chart deaths by homicide per 100,000 resident population in the U.S. from 1950 to 2019. So you start off with 1950, which is like 5.1 per 100,000. You peak in 1980. And then every kind of 10-year mark or so, what, it's one to the, oh, so like every year, post 2000, they have a track generally lower until 2015 where it peaks up again and then it's starting to come back down there's a little bit of variation here here's the 1990 drop there is an increase here right and now he's just talking about cities which he likes to do a lot which is specifically target something and that's crime rate here's murder rate Overall, uh. right now there's only three states that saw a decline: Maine, New Mexico, and Alaska. As I researched, for so in part, we're going through something similar to the earlier because moving to NIBRS, the National Incident Based Reporting System, which includes more data and more and expands the number of crimes for which it is collected that weren't previously measured in SRS. Huh. So at least according to the FBI, uh, when they start talking about data and methodologies and things, they don't let these two mix because of the variations between NIBRS and SRS and the variations in who's reporting which to where. So that's I mean, 2016 is roughly the best information we have. That may not explain all of the increase, right? All blew up somewhere around the mid-20th century. Baltimore's homicides went up by 346% from 1950 to 1991. 1950 to 1991. Wait, wait, wait. Isn't he even talking about current? Hmm. Kind of connects to the last one. Eighty-seven percent the share of the twenty fifteen homicides committed with firearms. Let's see what his specific data show. These are just straight up numbers, not by population. Baltimore's homicides went up by three hundred and forty six percent from nineteen fifty to nineteen ninety one. Nineteen fifty to nineteen ninety one. In 1926, a Baltimore official compared the 57 people murdered the previous year with four people murdered in similar-sized Montreal and joined the chorus of American voices of years worried over country's culture of violence. Last year, 304 people were killed in Baltimore. 77 in Montreal. That's not a new problem. Heavy concentration of homicides and a small number of high-poverty neighborhoods. Like, this connects the long, pretty clear connection between high levels of poverty, high levels of violence, because if there's lots of stress and not a lot of ways of getting resources, you get violence and crime, right? Just 25% of... Three hundred and forty-six percent. Chicago's homicide rate went up by three hundred. Is the one to two and twenty-one, basically risen back to what it was in nineteen ninety. But that doesn't mean it's level. Right here, you can see a consistency in that stuff happening. Right, gun violence, gun violence. Every single time, that the crime labs estimate illegal gun carrying in Chicago increased by over one hundred percent in twenty twenty driven largely by guns trafficked into Chicago, many from outside of Illinois. We know, right, without the presence of gun, altercations 
will happen, but they would be far less likely to result in death. This is something that was um, just heard in a podcast too about how like crime rate isn't necessarily affected by the number of guns, but lethality of those crimes, right? Like how deadly that crime is dramatically affected by the gun. Which is to say, as gun ownership, gun ownership goes up, the likelihood of crime being lethal goes up. But it's tough to track this source that he's using for these things. So just type this in Chicago. Here's New York City, Los Angeles, New York City, way lower than either that than Chicago or Baltimore's for that matter. Here's a chart. So the 1920s and 30s in Chicago is pretty high. It's about 50% higher than the 1920s to 30s. So he's particularly picking one of the lowest rates and then comparing it to one of the highest rates. That seems clear here. That seems probably what he's doing in all of these, but I think there's some bigger concerns. Okay, so what does he say now? 22%. Detroit went up by 1,400%. New York City's by 692%. Wait, Nick, New York City's 692%. Can we just see that one where... But we should say that the United States was one of the higher murder rates compared to all other developed countries. We only had an average of 0.8 per 100,000 people. In the United States, jump down to here, the average rate came at 5 per 100, which is way lower than during the 1700s or the 1800s or uh, 1900s, generally speaking, the peak in the 1970s or so. I don't know what else this really tells us, but matches up kind of with this. Lives. A little peak, way back down, compared to we're basically back at we were back by 14. Roughly the same as 1950. I wonder if this information has city data. Important to note that most homicides, 80%, were committed with firearms. Okay, so does he bring up Memphis in this video? Let's talk about it. He heard Baltimore, Baltimore on this list. So they didn't replace, they didn't report data. Chicago didn't report data. Kind of looked at what they were looking at, though. They were higher than most of these. You look at the per capita. Oh, these are for the biggest cities. Okay. So what I'm coming to figure out is that it's very difficult to find these numbers. So if he's talking 700% from 1951 to 1990 in New York. So here we go. This is again part and partial to what he's doing. If he is arguing... 1950 to 1991 time period, then maybe, right? But if he's talking 1950 to 2019, 2020, even although there's been this kind of increase in homicides of late, mostly by guns, um, you can kind of see these are pretty much the same with a decided track downward. So this is interesting because many of his conversation pieces are like that, right? Chicago, you have a peak, comes down, 1991, that's the peak. That's still higher than it is today after this um, dramatic increase in violence violent crime that we've seen over this past uh, couple of years, uh, thanks to the pandemic time period and the uh, poverty um, that keeps growing, right? So, like for me, I don't know what he's really saying just yet. So let's keep going. 
percent, New Orleans by 504 percent, San Francisco by 128 percent, and so on. Okay, we could go on and on. In all these cases, Helton notes, homicide rates were higher in 1991 than they were in the early 1900s before the invention of antibiotics and, and modern surgical techniques. What these figures demonstrates is that the violence we accept as normal is in fact a choice. It, it is normal now. It doesn't need to be. It's not inevitable. It's not just like, wait, 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 wait. So he's saying this video wasn't released in 1991. It was really released September 24th, 2023. We've seen throughout all this data that 1991 and in fact, the 1980s, uh, kind of late in the 1980s in general, there was a whole bunch of crime, right? A lot of violent crime. Um, homicides were up across a lot of different places. And it's come down since 1991. Why is he comparing those dates unless he's specifically choosing to obfuscate kind of what's going on, right? He's ignoring the real problem. Uh, so, yeah, that level of homicides were not necessary. They aren't necessary today, but they're not happening today generally speaking across the board in any of these places he's literally just comparing 1951 to 1991 and then in this case he says the early 1900s but that wouldn't make any sense because the early 1900s they weren't even tracking this data as we've seen from other sources there wasn't even a way to track this data until 1933 and it wasn't really adopted much until about the 1950s uh completely across the board and we also saw that in 2019, um, 2018, something like that, there was a change. Uh, no, sorry, 2016, there was a change to a new system, uh, but was not yet uh, across the board until 2021, which is why a lot of the data spikes for the 2020 results, because that would have been reported in 2021. Uh, and there was a wider variety of crimes. There is something else going on there, but in terms of why did violent crimes go up in essentially 2020 and partially in 2019, right, is because the pandemic, poverty, guns. Those three things. Increase in gun ownership while people are stressed from uh, incredibly low uh, amounts of economic safety, right, during a terrible uh, scenario where hundreds of thousands of Americans died to maybe what was a preventable scenario. And we suffered from that. Um, and we continue to suffer from that. The last one he did, I think, was San Francisco, 128% increase. Um, it seems bizarre because it's nowhere near the numbers of the other ones. He's just specifically trying to target, I think, uh, Democratic states, and those were the ones he could think of. So, like, I, I can't, I just can't find the data he's talking about. I'm curious, and I'm curious if um, he has anything in his comments. It doesn't look like it, but that's not why anyone's talking about the kind of violence. But let me, let me let have him finish his video. Okay. It's not just like how cities always are. All right, let's talk about this for a moment. Uh, so Matt Walsh is going out of his way to call out two specific years in order to stretch our imaginations um, to believing that those are the only years that matter. That if between 1951 and 1991 homicide rates increased, then clearly they're continuing. That that explains today's problem. Today, there isn't the problem from the 1990s, as we saw in the data that we've gone over. What we see instead is that crime, violent crime has actually been dropping. And there's a question as to why. Not a lot of people actually know. There was um, a study that uh, was you know, tracked to see if guns had any uh, bearing on that. And to be fair, it... You know, from what I uh, heard in the, this is Science Versus, the podcast uh, for gun um, violence, this first half of it, it talked about how crime rates 
didn't change whether there was more guns or less guns, right? So the amount of guns didn't change the amount of crimes. That was, it was pretty much across the board. It was pretty linear. Crimes, you know, coming down uh, since basically the late 1950s, early 1960s. Um, it kind of peaks in the 70s in some places, and then it starts to come down, and then there's a bump again in the 90s, and then it keeps coming down, right? Uh, early 90s, late 80s. Um, anyways, what changed is the lethality, right? So the frequency didn't alter, but the severity did. Similar to what we saw with fires in a previous video. So more guns, more lethality. We saw in the Baltimore statistics um, that it was something like 90% of all the homicides were done with a gun. And there's this kind of substitution flaw where people will or, um, think that if you just change, like if you got rid of all guns, let's say, then people would find another way to kill people. Well, they certainly would, but it wouldn't be as easy, it wouldn't be as cheap, and it wouldn't be as capable of killing as many people. So the number would drop. And it takes more time and more thought. So you might be in a situation where you think, oh, I can shoot this person and kill them and then run um, versus, oh my goodness, I can't fight this person. So I'm just going to run, right? So there'd be a, a definite decline and there'd be even a, an increase in that decline because um, a lot of people wouldn't be able to, you know, just as easily kill another person. And that isn't to say ban guns, right? That's to say, how do we get um, rid of the stockpiles of illegal guns? Anyways, Matt Walsh's video, I can't find those numbers, those specific numbers that he is utilizing in order to see that divide. But I would argue that that doesn't even support the question that he's asking, which is what's wrong with U.S. cities today? Um, and as we saw in another um, video, it, it's not Democrat cities that are the worst. Um, it's just cities in general kind of peak and go up high. And I didn't do a quick review about which one was blue, which one was red or whatnot, but we saw definitely not the cities he was mentioning on that list um, in order to see the top ones. But he is specifically targeting specific years to make a point that today Democrats are a problem or diversity is a problem or something is a problem and he doesn't know how to solve it. But that's 30 years ago, right? Over 30 years ago from the current data. And he's trying to say that that still applies today when what we've seen is that it doesn't. Another video of Matt Walsh basically utilizing some kind of research for a really silly point that doesn't actually support the point he's trying to make. Good job, Matt. This video is brought to you by Caffeine Zombies. Coffee's so good, it'll wake the dead.